I'm Screamin' Rachel and you're watching Trax TV here in the windy city of Chicago. Now you all know I do a lot of traveling and you all know my favorite city besides Chi-Town is New York. So right now I'm in New York and I'm working with Drusilla from The Pew which is another really awesome underground New York television show. So we're kind of trading off shows a little bit and tonight we're celebrating Chris Jones who's having a new release of a song called Strong and an album called Strong on tracks and we're celebrating Vamp Bikers. We're showing little bits of my house movie, the house the tracks built and Screamin' Rachel is in the house. That's me of course and I've got a new single coming up and it's called I Am House. Now David Guetta said he was the godfather on ABC Nightline and that did not work out too well because we all know he may be the king of techno but when it comes to house well actually not techno let's say king of EDM I correct myself but when it comes to house no 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 that will never do so because uh, you'd have to name people like Marshall Jefferson and Frankie Knuckles and these people as being the foundation, Jesse Saunders, uh, Farley Jack Master, those are kind of house foundation. But everybody knows, hey, I'm the queen of it. While all the boys fight about who's the biggest godfather and who's the most relevant, I don't care. I run the, I run it all. I'm running things. All right, so check it out. Tracks TV in the house. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back with Drusilla's World, and I'm here with Eric Rivas, and I um, wanted to talk to you real quick about the uh, life as being a uh, director, doing your own films, and I guess uh, you've been doing this for how long? Since 2003. Okay. So now, did you set off to be a, in the movie business? No, or? no. I was, I was <laughs> trying to be an actor, and it was a struggle. It was a big struggle, and finally I just got one of these vacation cameras, and I... I was going to Lee Strasberg and Stella Adler and all that. And I said, let me get some people from acting school and let me get some of my friends. And I found that if you ask, you know, ten people, five want to act, mm -hmm. four want to act, you know. <laughs> so then you put them together with your Lee Strasberg friends and you're bound to get something cooking. You know, okay. spontaneous and okay. technique together. So now, how long how long did you start shooting the Vampire Bikers trilogy? I started in 2012 before Hurricane Sandy struck us in New York City. And uh, that was the biggest obstacle that we faced, and I think we rented uh, some equipment from uh, Adorama. There was these batteries that were like $8,000 each, and it rained that night. And when I woke up in the morning, they said, um, you may owe $8,000 for the six batteries. I'm like, on my first fucking day of shooting, and I almost was bankrupt. You know? So, But thank God, somebody found out the batteries were bad. You know, you know another, another famous director had something similar like that happened um, during when they started filming Star Wars, <laughs> the first day of filming, they had, a, they had a horrible storm at the set. And they just, just turned into Indonesia, it was a sandstorm, no way they oh went that God, way for yeah. So I mean, maybe that's any kind of thing, you'll have $4 billion soon. Yeah, you know, things, you, things just need to test you. They have to test you, yeah, yeah. You've been tested. So, um, so now, so you've been shooting since 2012, you've got a trilogy under your belt now, you got mm. the, you got Japanese Borses under, right. under, under filming right that's now. That's next step. Um, What's been your biggest challenges besides money? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, camera people. You know, camera people are difficult to come by because you know I want I want them to play slash. I gotta be Axel. You know what I mean? And they don't. A lot of times they want to be Axel. You know what I mean? So other than that, I mean, you know, otherwise it's a breeze. You know, I love people, so I love being around people. And I find that most people are interested in creating. And you know, if we're gonna go out on a Friday night, well, we could go out and drink and shoot a movie and have something to remember. So in, in reality, I mean, it's not that I'm downing the possibilities, but I'm saying, you know, I probably would do this anyway. I like it. Yeah, good. It's good. Yeah. Sort of the same reason why I do the show. It's yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm out here anyway, so I mean, might as well. I might as well record exactly. stuff while we're at it because. You know, it's 20 years from now. You know, right, you bring something home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you bring something home. I mean, you could either do it, black out, and have no record of it, you know. Oh, here we are recording. Uh, yeah, no, it, it is really, uh, it's really, are you familiar, are you familiar with any of the um, Ninth Avenue Project? No. They, uh, it, it's a great collection of videos that were filmed of the Club Kid era. Oh, yeah. Up until about 19... Are we talking about Nelson? Nelson, yeah. Right, Nelson, I was impressed yeah. by that guy. I actually was thinking that we should do something in honor of him at some point. 
I, I recently found his work. Uh, my words were from down south, so yeah. I, I didn't live here in New York. Was right here. Yeah. His work amazes me, and I've been talking about it constantly for the past couple of weeks because I've been watching all these episodes. And you look back, and you know, when you're young, you don't think that you know, I should. Nowadays, we all have a cell phone. We walk around. Look at that guy. That guy went to every party with a camera camera in his own face. And talk about like with a spotlight. Not as easy as we do it now. He gave himself a hernia carrying around an original big VCR camera. Literally, he gave himself a hernia doing that. He had a, and went and finally moved down with an 8 millimeter camera. I was impressed by that. I mean, there's a story there. There's a film there. It is. About him. Absolutely. Even even both. Like, like, in other words, sort of about him and through his lens, the, the two things. That would be brilliant. Yeah. I mean, just what he captured during that moment of New York from the late right. 80s, you know, it's, it's a time period I look back at and it's like, I don't even remember the world like that. Right. It's, it's New York filming itself. Yes. So in a weird yeah. way, he was like right in time with the selfie, you know what I mean? It was like right in time. I mean, thank God he was there because I think what I learned about the club kids, you know, aside from meeting Michael and mm-hmm. everybody and Russ and everybody, was from this man. Yeah. Watching his. his yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, God, God bless his soul. I mean, he, yeah. he did he did some amazing stuff, and there's still more of it to be to be to be seen. And so. it's put together, and you know, they're working. They're working on it. We'll be right back with more of Drusilla's world. It's funky. <laughs> So much respect for that guy. Thanks. Absolutely, and I, I, I have to tell you, when you're, we were talking uh, during Halloween, uh, out on the street corner, which you may have seen that video. Um, you, I, I was, I found it very nice that you, you pay your, your cast such great compliments, and the, you know, how, how you take away being honored to be able to work with them, and it, yeah, yeah. it's good to hear, it's good to hear someone working on the well, director's you know, side. Can't, I can't do nothing without them, you know. I have this one theory about filmmaking, and I call it still life theory. And you have an apple, you have a banana, you have a peach, and that makes still life. So, you know, you can't have still life without that. You know, it doesn't matter how good the painter is or, or you know, you need all these elements. And then once those elements are there, then it's how good you are a director. Like, what do you do with them, you know? Michael Musto. You know, is it, is it me getting Michael Musto in a cameo, an Alec in a cameo, or am I making them act? You know, am I pushing them to a level where people go, man, you was good in that. You know, that's what I want. Right, you know? So right. I, I would hope for that. You know? So, what you, any 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 long term goals outside of uh, getting after Japanese Porsche? I mean, I have about seven shorts that I have that could be extended to. That you write Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one. No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no short films, you know, that that I really like that are about fifteen to twenty minutes each. That at some point, if Japanese Porsche took off in any particular way, which means that it would go further than Vampires, I would delve into each one of them. And, and shoot them all. They're like Twilight Zone episodes. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, we'll just close that with, um, you've been doing this for a while now. Any, any advice to the upcoming budding filmmakers out there? I, I would say that if you have a vision in your mind, just to make sure that you go out there and try to shoot it, f- facilitate it. You know, get the people to do it. You know, there's plenty of people that want to act. I used to act for free. I used to act for black and white film in New York Film Academy and show up at these rinky dick screenings. Nowadays, you know, I shoot an actor and we, we're an anthology in color, you know, and, and we have better opportunities than we had back then. So I would say just do it, you know, just don't think about it. And if you think about it so much that you don't want to do it, then stop. You know, but <laughs> if you're gonna do it, fucking do it. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm lucky. I got blessed with people that are uh, hungry around me, and it's like you, it's like a tumbleweed. You know, you, you before you know it, you're rolling with a team and, and an avalanche. And you know. once the ball gets rolling, absolutely. Yeah. So, thank you very much for thank your you, Drew. time and good Appreciate luck. Good luck with Japanese boards. Can't wait to actually hear the whole soundtrack for Nice talking to you. Thank you very much. See, we'll be back soon. See you later. You are. You can't take a joke. You can't take a joke.